Greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you, and welcome to another episode of Matchmaking Academy, where you are the star for all the wrong reasons, and this time our hero is Captain Zigil. He's a Silver Elite player, that's here. And since he's silver, guys, make sure you go easy on him, don't be too overly critical. I thought it would be great to do a video about the new Inferno. A lot of you guys sent in demos, asking questions about this map, and interestingly, a lot of silver players. I think seven silver players, seven out of eight people asking about this map were silver, so, uh, oh my gosh, what a new... Well, I mean, I, I guess he actually is a noob, because he's literally silver, so... It's not really an insult, it's just kind of like, we got, alright, we got it, let's, let's help him out, guys, let's get him good. So this player has some questions about retaking bomb site B, so that's where we're going to go over. The last part of the demo that you just watched, you saw he tried to go up the banana and just aggressively kind of peeked out and got destroyed. Look at how aggressively this player peeks, this is actually a big no-no, we're going to get into that a little bit later. And look, he's doing the exact same thing, his rotate is coming from banana, and easily killed, in fact, he showed himself very obviously to that AWP player. Now, there are some changes to this version of Inferno, so let's hop in game and talk about retaking on Banana and how it's a little bit more difficult now. This round is yet another example of this attempt to retake at Bombsite B, and this player exhibits what I like to call a game rhythm, where every single round you're kind of doing the same thing. And when you get to a position, you kind of approach the situation the same way. And this is a good thing to develop, because it helps you develop consistency. Now, here he comes to do the retake once again. They've called the B push. One thing I need to call attention to right now, and we'll pause to talk about this, because this is very important. Notice, there's no CT player playing at Arch. I mean, this is kind of a noob thing, but on Inferno, it, it, I hate saying things that are so obvious and I've said a million times, but it makes sense to have a player playing here, a player playing here. I mean, you can switch up constantly. This player can fall back, but always have a player in a position where he can rotate over here and help on the hold at bomb site B because Inferno in particular as a map, retakes are very difficult, especially on bomb site B. So it's a good idea to try to hold the site for as long as possible and kill them as they come through this chasm, as they come through this, this hellscape right here. So having a player rotate and help out and I mean even potentially have three players hold off the five player push into B it should be a slaughter and this should be the area where the where the team gets absolutely destroyed this team doesn't do that though um, they are silvers look at this player just completely out of the way there's no reason for him to be here and he's not really gonna help the team uh, on Inferno I mean look how the map is designed this is the fastest way right and the other fastest way is right here to get to B. These players, even uh, our hero at some points, would creep around through these back halls. I mean, all that's really going to happen if you do that is you're going to get killed by a lurk. Let's say there's some T being cheeky and he's sitting up here on this balcony, right? As this player is goofing around and creeping around, the terrorist is going to kill him. Would he, you, what does he expect to find the lurk player? It's just, it is absolutely, ridiculously the wrong decision to make to walk through this entire landmine of potential lurks and just, you're not helping your team. I mean, I understand the reasoning from a silver perspective is, oh, oh, I'm gonna get behind them, I'm gonna get a nice position here, but the games and the rounds go so quickly that it doesn't really make sense. Look at this. By the time these guys are all at banana, this player isn't even going to get in position anywhere near while these guys are already executing their bomb site take. So it's just completely pointless. All right, let's continue this. Little bit of a tangent there. But I got to call it out. I have to call it out. All right, notice the game rhythm, right? Peek down here, right? And then we're going to wide peek on um, the banana. He does this like every single time. Every single one of the other ones I showed you, every single little movement that this player did was the same. And I think it's the wrong movement. So, he will once again be felled for his mistake. Look at that wide peak. He actually turns the corner and runs straight at three players just standing there and gunning them down. It's just, it is very, very foolish. So let's hop in game and talk about this a little bit in more detail. One thing first before we do that, um, if you have like all these terrorists here at Banana and you know it, and as CTs, you've gotten into a position to hold them off. Look at this. You could set up these three angles here and the terrorists are completely trapped. What happens is you have full map control and it's, it really limits the terrorists' options. Instead of pushing them and just kind of running up here, it doesn't really make sense. It makes more sense to hold Banana 
so that if the terrorists try to fall back, you can pick them off. And if they do start to push at Banana, that's when you need to start pushing them so that you're engaging at the same time that the rest of your team is. Just running in here like that? Very foolish. Hey kids, I'm a counter-terrorist and I wanna retake Bombsite B. Now, this is the first time I've been on camera, um, or at least recorded something, uh, since I had my sickness. Now, I, guys, I was away. There's a reason there wasn't videos for like a week. Um, I had a s stomach illness, uh, virus, uh, whatever you want to call it. And so let's not get into any details on that because I was freaking miserable for like four days. Couldn't do any work. It was, I was like done, man. I was like, oh man, I thought I had the flu, but I don't. So I'm back. It only took like, like four days and I am, I'm alive again. I'm here to make some videos, make you learn, make you laugh, make you love each other as family. All right, so how do you do the retake on B? Now, as we talked about just previously, this guy wasn't actually retaking B because uh, the team hadn't taken the site yet. You'd know that. All you got to do is, like, zoom out your radar a little bit and look at my radar. I can see B site. I can see, like, A site and B site pretty much anywhere that I'm going to be on the map. So I know if they've actually taken the site yet, even if my teammates don't say anything because it's a friggin' silver game. So what we saw him do, like, nearly every single time was hop in here, pop there like this. I'll uh, go over here and then just like run at him. Not good. Come on, silver guys. You can do better than that. One flashbang. How much does this cost? It costs freaking $200. You come here and the first thing you think is, I know, I'm going to flash him, right? What do you think? I'm going to bounce off this wall. I'm going to be so, so neat. Bad. That was a terrible flash. Why is it terrible? Let's look at it from their perspective, right? What does this guy see? This is the guy he had to deal with or somebody here or even somebody here. A lot of times they're just going to have their back to you like this, which is really nice. You can just walk up and... Sh and Pop it a pop pop. So let's talk about this guy in particular because he's the one you got to worry about with this flash. This is who you're making fall back. He's got it scoped in once. He has it looking right there. That one, he can see that coming a mile away. He'll be able to kill you easily. He'll be able to just do this. Look. Oh my gosh. I didn't get flashed. So what doesn't he see? What can we use to flash him? Look at, look at the very top. If we can get something to go above this thing, he won't see it coming. And most of them won't see it coming either, uh, especially at the silver level. So this one... One simple flash will change your life. I came up with it. I just made this up. So the first thing you gotta do is kind of like clear this area right here and they can't see you then. Be very careful about it. Just like that. Just like that. If they see you and start shooting, don't repeat. Just hold this angle. You're good to go. Just chill, guys. You don't have to be so aggressive on them. All right. Now, the next spot that I always... Okay, my binds are a little bit off because I'm using the, uh, the big crosshair, but... Um, I always mult off this. You don't have to bounce it off the wood pile. That's kind of tough now. The wood pile is kind of crazy now. So I just stand, look straight in front of me, and then just, just throw. And it'll land right here. And look, it'll it'll mult off that entire position. Generally, we used to call this tree because there was a tree, but now there's not a tree. So I don't know. Let's call it wood pile. There's always a guy waiting here if you're trying to retake on B. It's one of the most common little corners you have to deal with. So I always throw a mult off there. That's like the first thing I do. Then this flash I come up with. You can stand, if you stand really close to this, um, you're going to look kind of like there, but it's just not as good. So I like to stand like back here and then look at the top flower pot like this and just let it go. And I'll show you what this is. This one actually will go beyond this arch, so it won't flash you even as you're moving forward. But check it out from this perspective. It comes right over past this thing and then pop. Pop flashes this guy. Look at this. I don't see it at all as I'm scoped in. It'll go right over and then right over the top over this thing. It'll flash everybody. So as soon as that flash pops, then it's time to go. Then you're probably going to have a guy right here, right, like he did. So he's this guy's going to start pushing. You're going to push up this way. You're going to take this position here. And then once you take this position, he's got a repeat. You're in a great spot. They're going to try to flash you. are going to try to do stuff. But you know what? You've got him held here. Time to just chill. And then, I mean... Then we just move into the to the other stuff. So, I don't know. I hope that helps in terms of retaking at Banana. But, I mean, retaking from this spot, a little bit better. Uh, look at all the different angles you can get killed from. First oranges, second oranges, new box, somebody chilling on the fountain, somebody in the corner there, somebody there. I mean, this is a freaking death trap uh, pushing up here. So, I always like to throw a, a, a smoke, smoke kind of up there. Okay, that bounced back way too far, but look, it just blocks off the site, and it doesn't, like, disallow my teammates from pushing at Banana as well. Um, then you can kind of work on this position right now. One thing you got to know about New Inferno, something that is very different, this is a wall bang spot. This is a very potent wall bang spot. So, generally, there's going to be somebody here lining up like this, doing a spray down as you're entering through this door, and you'll get hit. So you got to worry about that. I wouldn't suggest trying to counter wall bang it, 
Um, unless they've shot first. If this guy shoots first, go for the shot. But if you're just pu pushing in here and you don't see anything, don't be like, ah, because you've given away your position and it's a very small chance of actually hitting somebody. You don't want to give away your position like that. And look, you don't have to worry about this crappy corner over here now. He just kind of like this. His gun will stick out. It'll be easy to kill, right? You just got a little glance there. You'll see it in your peripheral even as you're moving forward to, uh, to clear this whole area before you get ready for your retake. And check this. Boom. That flash is beautiful, man. That'll get the whole site, everybody in it. Look at that. They won't see it coming. Comes over the top. Then you can work on your retake on bomb site B. I hope that helps. I hope just a little bit of tips and tricks. That's what we do here. We have a little fun. All right, let's hop back to the to the demo. What is it? With my sleeve. Holy crap. I saw just a few little things as I was going through the demo that I think could help this player. So first one, check this out. First round, he has 800 leaving the spawn. That is $800 in the bank. So did another one of his teammates, goodness. And that I think that's just a really bad idea on pistol round. Based upon how the meta of the economy is, there's no reason to save that extra cash. That little bit of money is so useful on this first pistol round. And watch this. He does suffer because he didn't buy armor. Watch, if he bought armor, look at this. Pop, pop, pop. See that aim punch? He had no chance of getting a tap there. He got hit right in the chest. He got killed in the chest. He died quickly. If he had armor, I think he actually could have, at least he would have had a much better chance of killing that glocking player. One of the biggest mistakes I noticed about this player's playstyle is that he was too aggressive on the CT side. It's better to hold angles, in my opinion, play the game a little bit, learn a little bit more so you know when it's appropriate to break the rules. He moves down here to do a JW pick, or I guess he's sneaky beaky and where Dark used to be. And this is nice to get like a frag and then try to get out, and boom, first frag continues, goes for the second frag, and gets punished for it. Now you may ask yourself, well that could have worked out, that could have paid off, and it did pay off, he did get the frag. If you get a trade, that's gonna greatly favor the terrorists, especially in a round like this. He just gave them the FAMAS that he have, gave them that weapon advantage, this guy's running around killing people with it now, and uh, gave them this position as well. Position is so important, and look how quickly his team crumbles after he goes down and after they get that first pick. And look, his FAMAS is even used to kill his friend. His friend died because of him. Here's another example of this player being just way too aggressive. Look at this. They're actually going to win this round. It's five versus two right now. Player's at the sand thingy. He peeks. He just like walks up there and peeks in opera. That you, you're never going to get an opera like that. I mean, maybe one out of one out of five times you're going to be able to pick the opera. He's got a FAMAS, man. He's got to go bing, bing, bing. Three pinks in the head at that range with that FAMAS to kill the player. You don't think that AWP player is going to get him? The best he could hope for is the AWP player misses, strafes back, and it allows his teammate to get a little bit of position. But in order to do that, I mean, it's better just to, to shoulder peek him. So he goes, foof, foof, and he's like, whoa, and he, he just misses the shot, and you can take some take some position. But just full-on peeking an AWP like that, I, it's just not good, guys. you got to play a little bit smarter. This round is a good example of, I think, why this player plays this way and it's because sometimes it pays off so that reward center in your brain goes oh maybe I should be playing like this look at this I caught him off guard I got behind him I got a crazy angle I did all this stuff he's at middle right now it's best to just wait 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 throw some defensive smokes instead he just peeks right down middle. look at that if there was an opera there he would have been dead so easily he walks down middle and just because he's playing against other silver players, right? He doesn't get punished for it, and he gets the kill, and he gets away with it. So right now he's thinking, oh man, I'm the best. Look at that. I'm so crazy with my peaks. Look at this peak. Yeah, taking, taking people down. I think that's why players get like this. It's because it works out a few times like this, so they think it's a good idea to do, which I don't think it is. Guys, you have to learn the basics. You have to learn the proper way to play the game. Drill the basics over and over and over again. Oh man, is he the best? And by the way, this is your Al Vision. And then, after you understand the game very well, after you get up like to the DMG level or something, if you get really good at the game and you learn it properly, that is the point at which you can break the rules. You, you really have to understand the rules first so you know when to break them. A true master in any craft is one who knows when to break the rules, and part of that comes from a mastery of the rules themselves, like Bach using the Devil's Triad, or Picasso doing whatever he had going on. So that was his Al Vision. I just want to say this before leaving. Captain Zigil, thank you so much for sending in the demo. This guy is silver right now, but, I mean, he's obviously shown that he wants to get better. He's actually sent in this demo so that we can watch and learn from it. This guy, if he applies the lessons, if he practices, if he focuses on the basics, this guy can go far. He will burst out of silver in no time. I, I think this guy could be DMG in one month. Thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Al, and I still have no closer.